Hey, what's up guys? This is Nine Lives coming at you with the second episode of my sniper secret series for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Today, I've got nine new sniper secrets for you guys, and they're all going to either help you improve your sniping and be more effective with the sniper rifle or just have more fun with it. Either way, I think you'll definitely learn something new today, just like with the last episode. So sit back, relax, and don't forget to take some notes. So to start off this episode with sniper secret number one, we're going to be taking a look at a melee lunge that will put you above the map crossroads, give you a bird's eye view flying through the air so you can go for a trick shot. For sniper secret number two, we'll take an in-depth look at field of view and I'll explain to you the pros and cons of the 120 FOV that I like to run personally. Sniper secret number three will be about creating more montage type moments. This has been highly requested by you guys in the comment section, so I definitely wanted to bring this to you today. and I I will be breaking down the clip from the intro of this video and explaining to you how to create more moments like that so you can hit clips like that yourself. Sniper secret number four will be showing you how to jump shot off the top of these ropes that you repel up here on Armada rather than just stepping off of it normally. There's been changes to slide canceling that we'll cover in sniper secret number five. Then I'll show you a really crazy spawn snipe spot for sniper secret number six. Two more melee lunge trick shots for seven and eight and a great Easter egg for snipers to have some fun with for number nine. So this crossroads lunge is one of those fun things to do as a sniper rather than something super practical. But if you take a look at the height you can get here, it's just absolutely amazing. All you've got to do is get your friend to quick join your public match in progress and then stand on that rock. Make sure they're on the other team or it's a free for all. Then when you stand below them, you'll be able to melee and lunge into the air. And if luck is on your side, hopefully you can get your shot to connect. So I run 120 FOV in Black Ops Cold War, and this is a huge advantage for me as a sniper because I'm much more aware of my surroundings. And as you can see, I can easily spot my opponent in the garage on the left there, no problem at all. Switching over to the default FOV of 80, I can't even see that garage from the same position. However, the trade-off for running a higher FOV like this is everything appears to be smaller, which puts a heavy strain on your aim to be really on point because you're aiming at what is essentially smaller targets because everything around you appears to get smaller, including your enemies, as you raise your FOV. If you'd like to try bumping up your FOV from the default, which is 80 FOV, you can actually do so on all platforms this year for the first time ever. Everybody has the FOV slider in their settings. Settings. Putting your FOV up is going to put a huge strain on your centering and on your pre-aiming. The better you are at these two crucial aiming skills, the higher you'll be able to have your FOV, so the more aware you can be of your surroundings. Don't start raising your FOV until you've mastered these two aiming skills. For more information on centering and pre-aiming, watch my How to Snipe video after you're done watching this. Now let's talk about positioning. So as a sniper, if you're trying to hit clips, getting quad feeds, five ons, or in this case, five on times twos, you need to constantly be trying to position yourself in front of the objective. As you can see here, Hardpoint is the most popular game mode for aggressive snipers, but it'd be the same for other objective game modes as well. Then you wanna make sure that you are in front of your teammate. If a teammate gets ahead of me, I'll usually wait for them to get taken out and then push up. And then the last step is to know where the enemies are spawning and cut their spawn off from the objective. So if they want to get to the objective, they literally have to get through you first. Then you should be strafing in the opposite direction that your opponents are moving. So if they're sliding right here, I was strafing left. If your enemy is stationary, you should move in the opposite direction that you were last moving. If you know there's an enemy behind a corner, you should try and jump the corner to avoid being pre-aimed. Keep moving to the opposite side that your opponents were moving to make it a harder adjustment on their aim. If you go back and watch where the enemies were taking shots at me, they're always missing me because they're shooting where I was instead of where I was moving to. If your opponent has better cover than you and you're waiting for them to peek, you should probably hard scope. So hold up your scope and then take the shot. Again, I hard scope this first shot because the enemy has better cover than me. Jump around the corner to avoid being pre-aimed. And then I just pre-aim the last two. Now for this next clip coming up on Garrison here, I'll actually hard scope into a doorway because I know if I run into the doorway, there's a pretty good chance that I'll lose that gunfight because it takes too long for me to pull up the scope. You'll notice for all three of these clips, I'm in front of the objective, in front of the team and cutting off the opponent's spawn from the objective 
active, so they have to run through me. Unfortunately, I didn't realize I was out of ammo on the Tundra there, and by the time I switched to the Pellington, it was too late. But anyways, I hope you guys learned something. All right, so here's what a rappel jump shot looks like. You can actually jump way over the top of the rope here if you time it correctly. And of course, it's much more effective than just stepping off normally. It even allows you to scope in and take your shot before you hit the ground. Unlike a normal rappel where you step off, you're super exposed, you have to start scoping in once you get your feet on the ground, which oftentimes will be too late, especially if you're rappelling into the enemy spawn, which you likely would be if you're taking this rope right here. Snipers usually have the biggest disadvantage when repelling because it takes so long to take your sniper out and then even longer to scope in so you can actually do anything. So now let's take a look at how to jump shot off of a repel so you can level the playing field a little bit as a sniper. Now you're going to have to be very conscious of the timing here. You need to press jump at exactly the right moment. As soon as you see this knot in the rope while you're repelling, you have to pull back and jump. So back on the joystick or back the S key on a keyboard and jump at the same time. If you pull back too much, you're gonna end up back in the water instead of on the platform. So be careful about pulling back too much. And also if you don't get the timing right, it's not gonna work. Good luck. All right, so there's been a stealth update to slide canceling in this game. In my previous video, I showed you how to slide cancel with the button combination of slide, slide, aim, jump. This will no longer work, so I'm going to have to show you the new way of slide canceling in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. If you slide cancel with slide, aim, jump, you'll be able to scope in early still. And as you can see, by the time I'm standing up, I'm already mostly scoped in. This is how to get the biggest advantage from slide canceling, and it only works this way if you have auto sprint disabled. If you have auto sprint enabled, it's not nearly as good and the button combo is just slide and aim. This way you don't get to start scoping in early. So by the time you're standing up, you still have a long way to go to get your scope fully up, which is a big disadvantage compared to having auto sprint disabled. And this is because aiming now cancels your slide if you have auto sprint enabled, but it doesn't if you have it disabled. Now you know. So here's an absolutely absurd line of sight that I wanted to share with you guys. If you use an ultra zoom custom scope, which allows you to magnify your zoom 20 times, you can see all the way to the enemy spawn from the safety of your own spawn. This is where it lines up to right here. As you can see, as I move a little bit more to the left, I'll see the lineup. There it is. That's the window that I was in on the other side of the map. And if you guys are familiar with this map, you know, this is a very common spot for people to pile up. So I wouldn't be surprised if somebody hits a triple collateral in this spot at some point. As you can see, it's much harder to use this spot with the reg scope, so ultra zoom is a huge advantage. So there's actually quite a lot of lunge spots on Miami. There's, I believe, three vehicles that you can lunge off of, and I think something like four boats that you can lunge off of as well. So while this isn't a very popular map, it is a great map if you're into trick shotting and you have a friend that's willing to quick join your session in progress, either in a free for all where it'll always work, or if you're playing a team based mode, you'll have to kind of try it until they get on the enemy team so that they can line it up for you. Because if they're a teammate, obviously you're not going to be able to lunge on them. The other thing that's great about this map if you're a trick shotter that wants to go for lunge shots is because there's so many different spots. If players are starting to catch on to the fact that you're trying to trick shot them, you can just move over to one of the other spots and keep going with your attempts. Unlike in the first lunge shot I showed in this video where there's only one spot on the map and once an enemy is onto you, it's kind of done. There's also a bunch of lunge spots on the big version of Armada with these crates out in the water. And what's great about them is in addition to being able to relocate between these crates that are all over the map, they're also way out in the water. So it's harder for enemies to catch on and start coming after you. It's just less likely that you'll be disturbed. So you'll have a lot of opportunities generally on Armada to go for these types of shots. I was only trying for about 10 minutes and I almost hit someone off of the zip line here. If you have a clip that you'd like to share, please do so in my Discord. So Nuketown has been the go-to sniper 1v1 map in Treyarch games since its inception. Back in Black Ops 1, the first year that we had Nuketown, it immediately became the sniper 1v1 map, and it's great to keep having it back in all the new Black Ops games. And this year for the Easter egg, if you go around and you pop the heads off all the mannequins around the map, you will initiate an Easter egg that turns your match into a retro 80s style video game type of vibe, adding a whole new flair to your new 
Nuketown sniper 1v1s or Nuketown sniper lobbies with your friends. I think it's really awesome. I'm really glad that they added an Easter egg like this into the game this year. So get some friends together and try a sniper lobby in the Easter egg or just one friend for a sniper 1v1 in the Easter egg. If you need sniper friends to play with, come ask in my Discord. I'll leave the link to my Discord in the pinned comment down below. Join us and find some friends to play with that love sniping just as much as you. And if you want to keep improving, make sure you watch these two videos on the screen right now, the previous Sniper Secrets episode and also my How to Snipe video, and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode.